So very good morning everyone and uh, thank you for this platform and inviting us at Vishwa Bharati University campus. Uh, special thanks to uh, Imai sir, the librarian of your institution and uh, Kosik sir, assistant librarian for taking this initiative and you know, uh, organizing uh, this workshop on grammar. And uh, no doubt about it yeah. uh, because uh, Vishwa Bharati users have been uh, one of the significant users for Grammarly and uh, very high demand in this campus that we can get lots of queries and feedback. So rather wasting much time, uh, I quickly come up to the session. Today's session I will complete in three parts. Uh, the PowerPoint presentation because there are lots of updates that Grammarly has come in and uh, I try to cover those updates and features. And then I'll show you the online demonstration how you can uh, utilize Grammarly on the online version. And also, uh, there is a plugin available as Grammarly supports multiple plugins. So I'll show you how you can use Grammarly on your MS Word plugin because on the MS Word plugin, there are no limitations if you are a photo writer. But if you are using uh, writing 1,000 pages, 2,000, 1 lakh pages, you can write. So uh, setting up the premise, once again, uh, I welcome you on this online workshop on Grammarly, the first number one business writing software and the theme of this uh, workshop today is improving research and academic writing using Grammarly. Quick overview, uh, Grammarly is basically a US-based product and we ERS are the exclusive partner for Grammarly in India. And we are the uh, contact person for all the end-to-end -end supports and services that you will need in India. And uh, the objective of this tool is uh, to help people communicate effectively. And in the current scenario, communication has been a critical part when we talk about written communication. We may speak good English, but when we do our research or academic writing, one single comma or a single punctuation mark can make a very different meaning of your sentence, right? So having a tool like Grammarly, it will ensure that all the communications that you send out are proper and there is a zero error on your topic. And the process that it follows is through English grammar uh, data processing using the AI and ML uh, driven techniques. And uh, in this, again, uh, talking about AI tools, there are lots of tools in the market, right? AI is taking away the effort and ideas of human. So this tool is basically, the beauty of this tool is the tool doesn't rise for you, but uh, rather it inspires you to write proficiently and check the finished work when it works. So uh, you can access Grammarly either if you are in a campus, uh, if you are at home, or even if you are traveling, if you have stable internet connection, your writing doesn't stop. So Grammarly is accessible from anywhere. And uh, I can see at online, uh, as we are on hybrid for there are 22 participants. Maybe uh, there might be faculties or even research scholars, they, there might be new PhD scholars. So, small input from my end I would want to share to young researchers that you know top five mistakes usually researchers make and you can uh, see the impact. Uh, number one incoherent structure the impact you can see the difficult to comprehend the structure weak thesis statement unclear on what the paper is about you are not working on or writing missing evidence lack supporting research data on chosen topic improper citation again very important this is where Plagiarism happens, unintentional plagiarism, right? And at the grassroots level of your writing, uh, poor spelling and grammar. The impact you can see, uh, losing the opportunity for good marks for writing despite a strong topic and high quality content. So, a uh, quick fact I would want to share with uh, all of you here today that uh, globally, you know, 85 percentage of the articles are rejected by international publishers. And that is not because of plagiarism, but that is for the one of correct language, structures, style, and improper citation. When I talk again about improper citation, this is where plagiarism comes. So I'll definitely brief you what is how this uh, plagiarism happens or advanced level how plagiarism comes in and how this can be corrected within the writing itself, how you can uh, prevent plagiarism. So having a tool like Grammarly, it will ensure that in your writing itself, you are preventing plagiarism so that you have 99.9 .9 chances that your paper is accepted when you send for a final plagiarism. 
and uh, I can definitely see here uh, libraries, sir, uh, assistant libraries, sir, and some faculties. You know, you end up basically faculties end up, uh, you know, spending more than eighty percent of their time in correcting English language and grammar checks on their students' paper, and they get very little time to go through the content quality, right? So this is where Grammarly is going to uh, make a huge difference. Grammarly can ensure that students are doing their writing correctly so that teachers can help them with their ideas. So when teachers spend more time on the content quality, then definitely it is going to boost or uh, impact your research output. Uh, uh, okay, I'll not cover much of this slide, but I'll uh, quickly want to share with you that, you know, uh, when you process your paper through Grammarly, definitely you can publish more with confidence. And on the screen, you can see that uh, who are our customers. Okay, we work with more than 500 plus customers uh, approximately now in India. All you can see the premier institutions during Krishnabad. And uh, uh, when you process through Grammarly, you can publish definitely more with confidence. And when your publication is signed, definitely no doubt about it. Uh, your institution's ranking also improves. And uh, on the fourth point, if you see here, audit plagiarism before it happens, right? So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, Grammarly is plagiarism prevention investment. We do not promote Grammarly as a plagiarism checking tool because the treatment of plagiarism on Grammarly is completely different. Okay? And uh, I'll cover on this slide. Now, uh, as you are aware that uh, Vishwa Bharati is a Grammarly subscriber, so when you utilize Grammarly, what are the features that you get? Okay. So there are new features here you can see, but I uh, 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 mentioned here a few of them. So on the education license that your institution is currently subscribing, you get checks for your contextual spelling errors, grammar checks, sentence structure checks is of course there, punctuation checks, and little bit brief about sentence structure. This sentence structure checks is basically if you write too long sentence and it may be you know unclear or uh, hard to read for your readers. Those kinds of sentences probably detects and it gives you a ready rephrase sentence where you can replace with those better clarity sentences and concise sentences. So you don't need to rewrite it. It's to rephrase the unclear sentence and you can just replace it. Paraphrasing and rephrasing again is possible with Grammarly. Grammarly is the only tool in the writing space that has ABA, MLA, and Chicago styles of citation. Okay. And with the high demand of the Indian medical universities now, Grammarly has also come up with Vancouver citation. So in case if you are doing medical research, you will definitely have the uh, feature to cite with Vancouver citation form as well. So, uh, Grammarly also gives you suggestions whenever you check your document related to correctness, clarity, engagement, and engagement. What are these four suggestions? I will briefly do it at demo. Citation audit, again, prevention of plagiarism. Uh, to give you a quick uh, example here, definitely Krishna uh, Bharati has a plagiarism software. So, how does a plagiarism tool work? After you complete your research paper, then only you send for a final plagiarism check. But, but being a writer or a researcher, you might not be aware whether your paper has been plagiarized or not. So when any plagiarized content is detected in their plagiarism tool, then your paper gets rejected and comes back to the concern user, which means you will have to do necessary correction and rework on those plagiarism content and again send it for submission. But it's again a waste of time or it's a long process for every user. Okay, so on Grammarly, the treatment is different as I mentioned earlier. From day one of your writing, Grammarly checks all of the writing issues. Apart from that, during your writing itself, then and there you can become checking for places. So if there is any plagiarized content, Grammarly then and there detects it not only just detects the plagiarism content, it will show you the exact source from where the plagiarism has come from. And then and there Grammarly tells you to give citations. You want to sign manually by your own, that is also available, or else you want Grammarly to cite it for you, that feature is also available. So if you want auto citation feature, now Grammarly has already added that feature. And Grammarly already covers most of the uh, renowned databases like Science Direct, Elsevier, Springer, 
uh, uh, pop journals, Beckmert, uh, PubMed, okay, Wikipedia. So most of the renowned uh, databases are already available on Grammarly's database. You want Grammarly to do citation for you, that is available. So I want to show you how that citation can be done. So uh, again, you get checks for your vocabulary enhancement. It will so uh, it will address wordless sentences. Right yep. I have one. Sorry. Uh, sorry, we lost the internet connection. Uh, apologies. Yeah. Now, this is huh? no, So, no, I was uh, talking about the checks that you get. Uh, the, other, uh, the other one is the vocabulary enhancement checks, similar to uh, rephrasing or paraphrasing of the sentences. And also, you get uh, repetitive word usage. You can avoid uh, grammar that gives you a better synonyms. For the repetitive word usage. Nativity check is a new feature again. As we Indians, we are like uh, non native English speakers. So we might have the challenge to write or communicate in English. For them, if they have the challenge, they can customize on this nativity check. For example, let's say a person from uh, Kolkata, if he or she is influenced in uh, Bangla or Bengali language, and it is difficult for him or her to write in English. They can set uh, on the nativity check as their primary language as Bangla or Bengali. Based on that, they can start writing. Okay, so uh, assume that you have written a wrong sentence in English, properly detects and gives you the right sentence, how it has to be written. So it will help you some neutral on your document and it will help you articulate in the right way. So grammarly covers all the regional language, all the different Indian languages, including from the south, west, north to eastern part. You can customize this. How to do it? I will show you about the Generally, AI is a very new feature. Everybody have heard about Chat GPT. It is also similar to that kind of feature, but uh, also keeping in mind because Chat GPT is an open AI and it is very biased. And assume that you have created any content, you have generated any context from Chat GPT, it goes all across the open internet, and there might be very high chances of pre-plagiarizing your paper, right? So this AI feature of Grammarly generating AI is an AI that works within the framework of Grammarly and it does not plagiarize any content or it does not copy any content from any sources, okay? But assume that uh, one, two person it has copied from any other sources, 
it will still tell you that this has been copied from this source and it will ask you to give citation. If you want to the cite tenant there, then you can also sign it, which means even if you copy the content from any source, you are also ensuring that preventing of plagiarism after just you copy them. On the right side of my screen, if you can see, uh, the only two okay, in the writing space that checks more than 400 levels of checks on your document to ensure that your document has a zero error. You can see on the right side of my screen. Uh, yeah, so uh, this is the citation part, as I have briefed you earlier. Whenever you are the site on Grammarly, okay, Grammarly checks all the internet indexes, okay, for the plagiarism part, putting your writing itself, as it works as an early warning system, okay, that includes institutional repositories, web blogs, author pages, symposium, uh, conference website, and if there is any similar content that you have, end up copying some of this content that has been already published, Okay. It gives you the exact uh, which content you have uh, copied and it tells you from which source you have copied and it will tell you to give citation. So whenever you want to cite properly uh, through manually, it gives you access to our website, which we call Online Writing Lab, uh, that is from Purdue University. Grammarly is uh, officially incubated from Purdue University and all the R&D team of Grammarly is in MIT USA. So uh, it's a manual citation. But if you don't want to cite manually, again, you get access to lots of databases where properly cites for you. And properly with the current uh, data that it has, it covers more than 16 billion records of database for your uh, citation for uh, purpose. This is the paid uh, sources that includes more than 100,000 journals, ebooks, uh, dissertations, newspapers, magazines, and including open internet as well. So, uh, as you are already aware, Grammarly comes in, I mean, you can use Grammarly, access Grammarly as your comfort zone, so you can multiple plugin options available. So, you get Grammarly for your native desktop app, you can install for your Outlook, Gmail, or MS Office, okay? It supports on multiple browser extensions, and even for your mobile phones, either uh, you are using Windows, iOS, or Android smartphone, you just need to go to Play Store and you can download the plugins. Very important part, again, uh, there are lots of uh, products similar to property in the writing space, but no products is compliant to this privacy and security. Very, very important because when you do research, it is very, very important that your research data are safe and secure, right? So, on the only two in the writing space, which is 100% compliant to the EPR compliance, American CCPA. And it has also been covered as the recognized by the HIPAA or HIPAA compliance. So, whatever you upload your data, everything is safe and secure. But unless you share your login credentials with your colleagues or friends, no one can see what you have written. Even your institution, as a person, cannot see what document you have uploaded, but he or she can definitely see who are the users of Vishwa Bharati and how many members are using, how many words are checked, that can be seen. But he or she cannot access your document. So uh, that's a quick overview on the uh, PowerPoint presentation. I'll quickly come to the demo. What I will do is, uh, I think there might be some new users. So I'll show how the registration process can be done also. I want to sign in with my account. I'll just sign out and show you how new users can register. So I'll open a new tab, uh, fresh link. And the URL is properly.com slash edu. Okay. And uh, just enter. <clears throat> Here you can see login option on the right side of my screen. It's, uh, for the first time users, instead of logging, you will see sign up or join join your school or join your organization. You will have to click on this sign up. Okay. Just click on sign up. As I am already a registered user, my email ID and password uh, are saved here. What I will say instead of this, I will just click I don't have an account. So if you do not have an account, it will come like this, the landing page, you will have to use your institution mail ID. If you want to self-register also, you can do it, but if you are using your uh, non-domain mail IDs like Gmail, Yahoo, you can't self-register, you must have Vishwabharati mail ID. 
to self register. For example, let's say ABC at the rate of Vishwa Bharati dot SCW. If I'm not wrong, I think this is your domain mail ID. This is the domain that you will have to use. If you use Gmail, Yahoo, you can't self register. The next, you have to put your password. The password should be a minimum of eight characters. You can use unique letters, symbols to make your password strong. If, if it is seven digit, then it won't take. It should be a minimum of eight characters. Then next, go to name. Insert your name here. Type your name as per registered with uh, Vishnu Bharati. And then after that, just click agree and sign up. Okay? Do not sign up with Google, Facebook, or Apple. If you do this, Whenever you next time logging on Grammarly, it will, uh, Grammarly will ask you for access code. So you will end up always contacting the customer support team. So very simple way, insert your domain mail ID here, minimum eight character password you have to create, and then enter your name, and just agree and sign up here. Once you agree and sign up, you will uh, receive a verification mail, mail on your uh, email inbox, spam, or junk folder. Just go and verify yourself. There is a link available that will be sent to your mail ID. Just go and verify and you are a registered user. So very easy way to register. It's only one time registration process. So that's the registration process. I just say I have an account now. So as I'm an existing user, I have clicked on login. It will ask you your email ID and password and just sign in. Once you sign in, you will be landing on the online dashboard. With, that's the online version of Grammarly. If you want online, you can use it on the Chrome, uh, Google Chrome itself. Or else you have plugin options provided. So this is the online dashboard. It's available on Chrome. You can use it with your login credentials. First thing when you are a registered user, first thing you have to check is do you have this edu tag highlighted in blue color on the left side of my screen? If you do not have this, you are a free user. So if you are a free user, you do not get access to all the features that your institution is subscribing to. And uh, as I have uploaded multiple documents, I have worked on some papers. So it's showing here, but for a first time user, you will just see new and upload. If you have a ready document, you can just click on upload, select a document, and you can start checking. Or else you want to write here itself, you can click on new and start writing. So before we start checking document or going uh, start the demo, uh, I would also want to show you uh, customization, how you have to do Why? Because every person's way of writing, idea, articulation will not be same. So how do you want Grammarly to give you suggestions, assist you, and help you with necessary corrections? That is very, very important. So how will you do the customization? On the right, uh, left side of my screen, if you see here, uh, here, for me, it's showing admin panel because I'm the admin person of my organization. But for a user, instead of admin panel, it will show you just my account. So straight away, just click on my account here, on this admin panel button, and it will take you to the customization page. <clears throat> Don't get any confused because there are lots of options, but that all those options are not for the user, that is for the admin person. So first thing, your account, you can update your name, password, you want to delete your account, you can do that. And after that, straight away comes to writing, right? Because this is meant for writing purpose. So this organization, tools, analytics, this is for admin person. Uh, so don't touch here. Straight away click on writing. On writing also, just focus on these three options. Your dictionary, language setting, and your preferences. The rest are again for the admin person. So straight away come to your dictionary. And repeat this. First, when you come to the customization page, come to the writing. Then straight away come to dictionary here. Okay. Click on your dictionary. <clears throat> this uh, will not be always used by any user. Basically, if there are some words, grammar is showing you that this is incorrect, but as a writer or uh, researcher, if you think that a particular word is correct for you, you can add it on the personal dictionary. So going forward, again, if you rewrite the same word, grammar, uh, grammar team will be less incorrect. Okay. Next, click again on writing. Come to the language setting. This is also very, very important part of Grammarly. Once you click on the language setting, I was talking about the nativity check, right, on the PowerPoint presentation. So here, select your primary language. If you are a good English speaker, English writer, 
So you can set here as a degree. But a person who is influenced in their mother tongue, let's say native language, somebody influenced in coming from this, let's say uh, Bengali or uh, Baba, you can just type Bengali, you can set as Bengali. There is uh, Assamese, okay, coming from the north, you have uh, Bhojpuri. Okay? Unique languages are even covered on grammarly like uh, Sindhi. Okay, you have Sindhi, you have Sanskrit. Person who is influenced in uh, Sanskrit, even Urdu is there. All the South Indian languages are again covered Telugu, uh, let's say Tamil, Malayalam, Kannada, okay, Western part, uh, uh, Marathi is there, Marwadi is there, Gujarati is there. So, grammarly covers all the regional languages. So, as you get a person who is influenced in their mother tongue, and for them, there is a challenge to write in English, they can set their influence native language here. So once, as I said, if they make a mistake in their sentence, the English sentence is wrong. Grammarly detects and it gives them the right sentence, how it has to be. That's how the nativity check this pattern. And um, again, Grammarly comes in five different flavors of English language. How would you want to write a research paper in which language? Assume that uh, if you click here, you can see. Grammarly comes in American, British, Canadian, Australian, and Indian English. Assume that you want to publish in higher American journal. If you want to write in American English, you can also do that. Okay. Um, and you want to NC assistant, do you want to help Grammarly sound clear on your document? This button is uh, by default, it is switched off. You can just click and it gets switched. It's, it's very, very friendly customization. Uh, you, don't, uh, you don't have to uh, type or write anything. Next, click on the writing, the last uh, customization is the last one, your preferences. When you click on your preferences, there are lots of preferences here you can see. I take one, two examples just to give you a quick brief about it. Preferences means you can see here what are the suggestions, how do you want Grammarly to give you uh, corrections, help you or give you the right suggestions, okay, whenever you start writing or checking your document. So, uh, for example, let's say <clears throat> if you are uh, working on something, any research topic or on a research paper, definitely you need this APMLA or Chicago citation styles to sign on your document, right? So, but let's say a person in the finance department or administrative department who is using properly, he or she will not use or need this because they don't write a research paper. So, uh, please do not go and switch on all the buttons, otherwise you will get complicated suggestions. Whichever is required for you on your uh, writing purpose, you can customize this. And it is only one-time customization. You don't need to customize all this. Okay? So, if you are uh, working on a research paper, definitely you need this. And there is an explanation for every preference. Do you want Grammarly to adhere to the FTA, MLA, and Chicago citation style? Basically, it will help you correct citation formatting in any evidence that was citation style. Assume that when you cite your paper, if you have cited wrong, the format is incorrect. Grammarly will give you the right format. It will tell you that the format you have cited is incorrect and this is the way you should cite. If you can't cite, you want Grammarly to cite again, Grammarly will cite it for you. You have to do what, what you have to do is just switch on this button. No nothing typing, no nothing writing here, just switch on the button. Do you want Grammarly to rewrite your sentences which are, uh, with, where there are clarity issues? Yes, just switch on this button. Once you switch on, any clarity issue sentence will be detected and Grammarly will start rephrasing and giving you the right suggestion. Okay. You can go uh, through these entire preferences one by one. For every preferences, there is an explanation with examples. What does this basically mean? So these are preferences how you can customize. Uh, I'll just I'll just show uh, one uh, last customization that is tools. Tools here. This is a snippet feature. Basically, this snippet is to create ready-made templates uh, for your email communications. Like uh, students write email to their uh, HODs or even employees to their uh, reporting managers, right? Them. Some regular emails like birthday visits, deep request, those kinds of emails, 
Again, we need to write it to base of time. So you can save those kinds of email templates here. So if you click on this effect, you can see I have also created. Okay, so I you can uh, you can create multiple folders. I have created a uh, few snippets like for example leave. As I most of the time I have to take leave one more go. I don't know more. So I have saved most of my email drafts are for leave requests. So I have typed some uh, mail bodies and I have saved it. So uh, I have saved it on my mail body. As Grammarly comes with multiple plugin options. So instead of always writing my emails, I go to the mail compose, uh, compose email and I just don't type my email again here. I just click on backslash or let's say backstroke. Once I click on backstroke, my entire snippet body arises on my mail here. Which one would you want to take? Let's say lead application. My mail is ready. So it saves a lot of time for me and I can just insert Few things like their sir or their madam or their colleague, whatever. Put the mail ID here and you can just enter the subject and send it out. So it saves a lot of time with this snippet. That's how this snippet feature works. So I hope snippet part is clear. That's the basic customization of Grammarly. After that, just again click on the Grammarly logo and now we will come to the demonstration. So, I have already uploaded a demo document and I'll show you how the corrections can be done, how you can tackle the issues. And you just open this document. Whenever you upload any document, uh, the first thing that will pop up on, on your screen is goal setting. And on this goal setting, you can see the parameters. There are four parameters Grammarly gives you. And Grammarly asks you to set your goals because Grammarly needs to understand that what is the paper you have uploaded and how do you want Grammarly to tackle all the issues that are there on your the paper. So if you see the goal setting domain, what is the paper? Is it an academic? Is it a business communication that is going on? Is it general, email, casual, creative? What is the intent of your document? You have to customize this. Are you trying to inform, describe, convince, or tell a story? Next, uh, who are your audience? Who are you addressing it to? Is it a general audience, knowledgeable or expert? And what is the formality? Of course, if it is an academic paper, it can never be informal. Either you give neutral or you uh, set as formal. And on this goal setting, domain, audience, formality, you will have only one option. But on the intent, your intent, you can select multiple. If you want, if it is fitting, as for your requirement with your document, you can all select, but if you need one, two, then as for your uh, convenience, you can customize. Now, let's say uh, this document that I am checking is an academic document. Once I click on academic document, you can see some changes. Robert is again asking you what is the type of the document? Is it an essay, report, or any other research paper? And in which format you want to cite if there is any plagiarized content on your paper? For your requirement, you can customize this. Once you uh, once you customize this, you can see here overall score performance on the background of my screen 81 81 percentage out of 100. Once I click on done, the overall score again gets calculated, and it comes back to your document from 81 percentage. It has come down to 76, which means more I have to do better. This 76 percent can go up to 100 percent once you complete correction of all the issues that is there on your document. Okay. So uh, on the PowerPoint presentation, as I have mentioned, whenever you check your paper on Grammarly, Grammarly will give you suggestions related to correctness, clarity, engagement, and delivery. What are these suggestions? Correctness will ensure or it will tackle Grammarly will tackle all the spelling mistakes grammar mistake, punctuation mistakes, okay? All these mistakes, uh, advanced error mistakes will tackle here and it will make zero errors. Clarity, again, all the clarity related issues, uh, it will rephrase all those sentences, okay? Again, uh, engagement is something like, you know, all those repetitive word usage where lots of users, again and again, they use the similar words or sentences on their paper, those kinds of Issues, uh, I mean, your readers may lose interest on your paper, reading your paper. So, 
All those will be taken and grammarly will start giving you different sentences or uh, different words for the repetitive uh, word or sentence usage. Delivery is the last part, that is the formality check. If there is any formality issue on your document, all this delivery, all the formality checks will be done. And if there is any informal communication that is going on, then Grammarly will suggest you how the formal way how it should be communicated. I take one two examples now. Right now it is uh, giving me all uh, issues, all suggestions. So we uh, you know advise our users that we should go with one by one correction. First you can go with correction and then come to clarity like that. Why? Because there might be some words or sentences you might give. If, uh, you might want to give. If you want, you can extend it all and it gets auto correct. But better to go with one by one. So I will show you like once I click on correctness, all the correctness issues only will pop up on the top. Okay, all the correctness highlighted in red color. So I take one example here. Grammarly again does not auto correct for the users. It gives you the right suggestion if you want to correct it, then only you can accept it this time. You have an option to dismiss also. So for every uh, issues, it will give you the right suggestion on the right, right side. Once you accept it, then only it is taken. Now, uh, for example, there is an highlighted something. <clears throat> uh, it's saying that correctness issue is that correct the sentence, grammarly suggesting me. Why this suggestion is coming? You can see here an exclamation mark, learn more. You click on learn more for every writing issue or every error of your document, there is an entire explanation for every user. It's like a mentor or a guide. So working on Grammarly itself, you can learn a lot. So it explains you that this sentence contains a few spelling, grammar, or punctuation mistakes. And instead of uh, this sentence, Grammarly is saying you should use this sentence. If you think that this is correct, for example, instead of show, it should be show. If you think you should take it, you can accept it. Once you accept it, then only it is correct. Okay. Now, that is the correctness part. So, from 76, it has come to 77,000. The more you do the correction, your score also keeps on increasing. I will take uh, clarity now. So, what are the clarity issues? Right. Uh, I take one example here. In, in this uh, sentence, you can see, revise the wordy sentence in an effortless manner. If I click on this sentence, it is saying clarity issues is there, change the wording. To complete one sentence, I have uh, written in eight words. Same meaning of this sentence I am getting from Grammarly with just five words. It's making concise, better clarity is there. Do you think that you should take this so that your, you, uh, your readers, uh, you know, it's more clear for them when they are engaged with your document, right? So if you think you should take this, this can accept it. Or else you don't want to take it. That's okay. You have an option to dismiss. So you can accept it and it's, that's how the clarity part is taken. I take one more example. Let's come to engagement now. <clears throat> For example, let's say inspect your uh, vocabulary carefully. You see here, this grammar is highlighting something here in green color. What is the issue here? If I click here, it's saying engagement issue is there. And why this issue is there? There is a better suggestion from Grammarly. And you want to learn more. Why Grammarly is saying incorrect? You can just learn more here. It says the phrase inspect your vocabulary care carefully may be considered a bit weak or ordinary. Consider enhancing your writing with a broader variety of words. So these are ordinary words which are used by most of the writers. Maybe you can sound better is what Grammarly is suggesting you. To express yourself that you are a better writer, right? So instead, instead of saying inspect, you can say something like scrutinize your vocabulary. The meaning is same, but the word that you will be using are unique and different. So if you want to accept it, you can accept it, right? Now, uh, there are a few, uh, what do you call, uh, Words that most of the users also frequently use, for example, uh, let's say indicate. Indicate words are again most of the time used by most of the writers. Now, how will you get a better synonyms for these kinds of repetitive words? Just double click on any word. You just double click, and then synonym pops up on your screen. Which one you want to take from Grammarly, you can take it. 
for example, indicate point mean suggest signify. You have to take signify and just click here to change this. That's how you can avoid repetitive word usage. Same way for like let's say wordy. Instead of wordy, uh, protracted, verbous, prolix, these are I hardly heard even myself, but maybe you can sound something different. So this is how you can avoid repetitive word usage by getting better synonyms by just double clicking on any word. Let's take delivery, the last suggestion. I take one example here. Delivery again, as I mentioned, it is related to formality check. So if you are writing or working on a research paper or an academic topic, it has to be always communicated formally. So let's take this sentence. <clears throat> Uh, Grammar is highlighting this, saying that uh, delivery issue is there. Let's learn more here. If I click here, it says the two infinitive to write has been split by the modifier correctly. Avoiding split infinitive can help your writing sound more formal. So it means formality issues there. So anything that you have informally written on your document, grammar will detect and it will give you the right suggestion. Instead, it is saying to write. Uh, to correctly write the sentence, it should be to write the sentence correctly. This is the formal way of writing or communicating. So once you accept it, then it is correct. Now this is the uh, correction part. One two examples I have shown you. First, grammarly ensure that you do all the corrections. Then uh, assume that you are out of your ideas. Uh, I have in fact uh, mentioned that there is a new feature just launched. Two months back, that is called generative AI. This is a new feature. So, assume that you have you are out of your idea, you need some uh, inputs from the AI. Just click on this generative AI. The AI style guide. Okay. Down to style guide. Style guide is basically for the admin. Actually, the admin person have to customize for the entire organization. Uh, of course, that I separately admin uh, training. So uh, yeah, in the meantime, whoever uh, who have joined online also, if there is any queries, you can keep on typing your queries. Once at the end of the session, I'll be taking one by one. So uh, yeah, so coming to this uh, part, generating AI is again a new feature. Whenever you are out of your ideas, you can ask the AI to generate context for you. Anything you want to write a report, you want to write an email draft, I anything, high quality drafts, okay, revisions, anything you can ask AI to write it for you. Uh, let's say, for example, uh, you can just type any questions, whichever you like, write about uh, that. And this is a question, whatever you want to type, you can type question within just one, two seconds, the entire content will be generated. And if you think that uh, the content that has been generated by the AI is good and uh, you want to use it on your paper, you can use it. Now, there might be questions in your mind that, you know, this is like, you know, pre uh, plagiarizing my paper, what if the AI have copied this content from any other source? Don't worry. Nothing will be plagiarized. Why? Because, first and foremost, as I mentioned earlier, Grammarly's AI works within the framework of Grammarly. And it is not like any other AI, like CAD, GPT, or lots of other AIs that you might have heard. And again, uh, keeping in mind, assume that the AI uh, feature of Grammarly have copied any other content from any other source, it will still tell you that this is where I have copied from, and it will tell you to give citation. If you want to cite on Grammarly, or you want Grammarly to cite for you, then it will definitely then have their cite for you. Which means if you are giving citation for the plagiarized content, then your paper is not considered as plagiarized or plagiarism. So when you send for final plagiarism check, be assured if you are citing here, you will have 99.9% .9 chances that your paper will be accepted. That's how uh, we are uh, like when we sharing it with you, practical example, IITs, IIMs, or ISIS, they are all customers. They process their papers through property and then send for final criticism. And very uh, beautiful testimonials we have from like IIT Madras. After they have adopted property in their research activities, their publications have gone four times more than compared to other So uh, it's a pleasure to share that. 
So that's how the AI feature works. So coming back to this, uh, assume that you have uh, liked the content and uh, you want to take it, then just insert this and the entire content is inserted. Now, uh, there is a limitation here. For this content or the context that you will be creating from generating AI, every user, every month, you will have access only up to 2,000 words. So please do not expect that generating AI grammar is AI will write everything for me. No, only 2,000 words you can use. This is to ensure that human values and ideas are also put into your work. So up to 2,000 words you can use every month. Once you exhaust 2,000 word limit, then you will have to wait for the next month. Then again, you can start using. Now, once you have completed uh, the generative AI creation, you can close this button and now stand in there, check for plagiarism. Now, by default, on the right side of my screen, as you can see, the plagiarism button is also switched off. Just click one click, and it takes just a few seconds as Grammarly goes against billions of web pages and starts checking your document. So, assume that if there is any plagiarized content, Grammarly uh, detects all the plagiarized content and it will tell you how many percentages have been plagiarized. So all these, actually, uh, like there are limitations as I believe definitely everyone will be aware. For example, this is not considered as plagiarism. Something may be mentioned, but there are certain levels of percentage or content that if it is plagiarized, then only it is taken as plagiarism. For example, I'll show you uh, a few examples here. Uh, let's say, yeah, if entire content is like this, this is plagiarized. This is considered as plagiarism. Now, how will you avoid these plagiarism theories? So, uh, let's say I will take one of the examples. This is also considered as plagiarism. Yeah. Just one sentence. Publisher will also do understand that you reject and then your paper, but if this, this one is plagiarized, of course, that is plagiarism. So, you will have to do the citation to avoid that plagiarism. Now, how will you avoid If I click on this content, it is saying overall 58 percentage of my document has been plagiarized because if you can see and for this content four percent of my text matches this source which is coming from where else they give and this is the exact source grammarly is giving me right and grammarly is also giving me a ready to give reference here there's a uh, ready to give reference you can give, just copy this and use it here or else you want Grammarly to give citation for you, you want to cite manually on Grammarly, that is also possible to avoid plagiarism. Now, how will you avoid plagiarism? Just open a new tab here, grammarly.com slash edu, the same URL, enter, don't get confused, straight away, scroll, just bottom. And if you can see your features, there is a citation generator. Just click on citation generator and you will land on the citation generator page. This is a manual citation. Okay. In which format do you want to cite? AP, MLA, you can select. What is the source? Book, dissertation, generative AI, documentary, journal, article, magazine, article. As per your requirement, you can select the source. Here you can uh, insert first name or author. All these details are there. DUI, URL, everything. This is manual citation. Once you insert everything, the citation will be generated on the right side. You just need to copy the citation, come to your document where you want to cite, you can cite. Okay. And uh, here on the manual citation, you can see, if you want full citation, there is a full citation. You want in-text citation, in-text citation is also required. Now let's talk about uh, auto-citation. How, how will Grammarly auto-cite? So you don't want to cite manually, don't worry. For example, if, of course, you are having access to Grammarly. So Grammarly's database have included most of the uh, remote databases, okay, like Science Direct, Elsevier, Safe Journals, PubMed, okay, Springer. So if you're citing for all of these platforms, as Grammarly also includes Wikipedia, so as I have access to Wikipedia, I'll just show you how Wikipedia platform will show you to give citation. And if anytime you log in uh, in the Wikipedia page, Science Direct, uh, El Xavier, Springer, okay, Sage Journals page, this floating button of Grammarly citation button will pop up on the screen. 
You don't need to put anything, insert anything. Just you are citing for this Wikipedia page. Same if you are citing for a Science Direct page that is linked to the URL URL that has been plagiarized on your paper. When you go to that page, floating button of the citation will be here like this. Just click on Get Citation. The citation is ready. Copy the citation, whichever wherever you want to cite. It is auto citation. You don't need to insert anything. Can see here. Just I close this again. A floating button will be there on your screen. Get citation. Just click on get citation. The citation is ready. Copy the citation, whichever you want to use. Okay. Why one thing? Yes, sir. I just ask you a technical thing. Instead of having this copy and paste there, this is a kind of not auto citation. In what I understood is that kind of manual citation. Instead of copy, it should be insert or import. Then it will automatically import to my location so that it will be actual auto citation for ease. Basically, instead of copying, it should be directly inserted. Insert or import. Uh, so that it will go there based on my APA or MLA, whatever you have said, that's right. So that it will be more user friendly. Got it, sir. Definitely. This is my condition. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So that's the citation part. So once you are uh, done with the citation, uh, I hope this much it is clear. Once you are done with the citation, this is for the research scholars and students. I would recommend what you can do is you can see an overall score. You can click here. You can see the performance of your document. You can download this report. Okay. Once you download this report, I'll just show you how this report looks like. I, uh, in fact, there is a detailed report. It is already downloaded here. This report will be uh, downloaded by the username. You can see your general metrics, you can see the reading time, speaking time, if you are presenting your paper in a conference, small, small things, but very important. How many minutes you would need to take, so primarily tells you, so that your listeners also doesn't get bored, right? And your score performance, how many issues left. If I have already corrected all these issues, you will have shown here uh, zero. Then how, how, much, how many, uh, what were the uh, plagiarism uh, percentage from how many sources, and again, if you can see all the writing issues which are there. So uh, this report, why we uh, recommend users, I mean students or research scholars to download is any of your research, research guide or faculty will not have that much time to go against 50, 60, 100 pages of your document. But just looking at this report, he or she can directly know on which page there is an issue. He or she can directly go to that page and help you with correction. It means it saves a lot of time. So that's how the down, uh, you can do the uh, download the report. Now, once you complete the uh, download, uh, downloading the report, click here on the left side menu button. If you are connected to a printer, you can directly print it. You can download the document. And uh, one more thing, Grammarly does not support PDF files. Grammarly support all the editable formats. That's here, dot .doc, .odp, uh, .docx, rtf. On the editable format, but don't worry if you need your document in PDF, you can download your document and then convert it to PDF. So, one way or the other, it is, uh, it will work. So, uh, so once you are done, or else, assume you have not completed the correction, you have to come after two, three days and work on your document. Just click on my grammarly, your document will be saved on your dashboard. This is uh, who can view, only the user can view, no one can see this. And once you delete your document here, there is a delete button. It goes to the trash folder. Assume that uh, here on the trash folder, it remains here for 30 days. Once it is deleted here from the trash folder, it is gone forever. As Grammarly does not store user data, before you uh, delete your document, please download it. Once it is gone from here, even Grammarly cannot retrieve it back. So that's, uh, that's a quick presentation on the online version. I'll take another five minutes and then we'll come back to this. So uh, if you're not comfortable always working on this online platform coming to Pro, you can have the plugins available. Click on these apps. I've already installed in fact for my uh, Outlook, uh, MS Word, uh, Gmail, okay, for Chrome, etc. So how does Grammarly works on Outlook? Our uh, MS Word I'll just show you. This is a document I have written on MS Word. You can see here it's very clean. And I was talking about the only two that checks uh, 
you know, more than 400 levels of uh, checks on your top two. So, I have already installed Grammarly's plugin here. Let's see the button. I have already logged in. Same way, once you install it, it will ask you to log in. Same user ID and password you have to use. You can start logging. Then you can check your document. Just click on Open Grammarly. On MS Word, the document was very, very clean. And on Grammarly, you can see the difference. Uh, yeah. Right now, it is showing all issues. Right? You can see. And then every sentence, every line, every paragraph, there are lots of issues pending. And right now, it is showing me all issues related. <coughs> So uh, you can go with one by one correction. So, so uh, all issues related right now. Uh, same way how I have shown you on the online version. First, uh, adjust your goal. After that, after goal setting, uh, go with uh, correctness. Come with clarity, engagement, delivery. Just click on any uh, issues. It is showing here. And uh, it will give you the right suggestion here on the right side. Once you click it, then it takes that's how correction can be done. It's very, very similar with the online version. The only option on the uh, MS Word plugin that is not available is generating AI feature and uh, downloading the report. But don't worry, if you really need the report, you can upload on the uh, online version and download the report. But generating AI, you can con uh, generate the content there and copy and paste it here. One way or the other, it is possible. Okay. And here, again, on the best word also, plagiarism button is available. You want to check for plagiarism, just switch on. By default, it is switched off. And again, it starts checking for plagiarism. <coughs> so, if there is any plagiarized content, you want to cite it. As I have shown you on the on how you can go and get the manual auto citation. Same way, go to that page, cite for any of the content that you want. So here you can see the percentage, 82 percentage plagiarized, which are the plagiarized content, it will be highlighted in light uh, green color. So you can see it's coming from El area. We are ready to click and give reference here. Same way you want to uh, cite it manually, come here to the free citation generator, insert all these details, and you can copy the citation and paste it, or else go to the concern database for this database, if your institute is having a subscription to, for example, Science Direct or Health area, you get this auto citation feature available in this same. Okay. So, because Grammar is already included in the database. So, uh, yeah. So, this is the citation part. And once you can, uh, once you complete all the citation, you can save your document. And on this MS Word uh, plugin, there are no limitations of uploading or checking your document, as many pages you want to write, you can write. But on the online version, which I have shown you the earlier demo, there is a limitation for every upload, Grammarly will take up to 4 MB files. So assume that your uh, uh, file is 20 MB, you can break it into 4 MB into 5 times and upload. But here, if you are a thorough writer, you better use MS Word plugin because you don't have any limitation. So, uh, with this note, uh, we have actually come to the uh, end of this today's session. A very simple tool and uh, a very easy to use tool. And uh, a very friendly tool. You can access it from anywhere, whether you're at home, uh, campus, or even if you're traveling, if you have internet connection, your research or writing will be stopped. So, for ending this, sharing a small picture. Being a researcher, you know the struggle that you go through, but no one sees the struggle and when your paper is published, they just read your paper, but you know the pain of writing and the research pain that you have gone through, right? So once again, thank you so much, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. No. There is no question. There is no questions. So there are no questions. If you have any questions. Uh, so you said that the range uh, of the native player languages. Uh, that is uh, what for the international languages also. Yes.
fact, I was just speaking about the uh, Indian languages, but all other languages, international languages are. Any what is the file size of for plagiarism checking? Uh, see, plagiarism, it's not plagiarism file size, it's the document size that you upload for uh, checking. The document? Uh, for the online version, up to 4 MB files per upload. But on the MS Word plugin, there are no limitations of the document size. So as much document on the MS Word plugin, you can upload unlimited. But uh, on the online version, if it is 20 MB file, four four MB of regular file size. That should be increased. In fact, that's the online was uh, why I'm saying this is at present if you get advice only HIs of India that we are not supposed to check all such files like research publication, article publication, to deal with. They are allowing only thesis and thesis related to publication, right? That's why most of the initial group was subscribing this kind of you now uh, commonly. So we are teaching our academics to check their files, not only English grammar, but also federalism through common. Then we have found two problems. One is, as my colleague said rightly, that is a small file size. Let's say one dissertation is having 150 pages. Its file size may be on average more than 25 MB. Right? So, common is still there. And as you said, if once I scatter the chapter wise file, then I will not get the, what I say, congested per percentage. Right? Congested percentage I will not get. So, that will not get any significant that. Less than 10 percent or more than 10 percent. So that is one issue. Another issue is that when we are going to check any file to command, then we send it to let's say as we are doing a nature, any journal. Then I have instant experience. If you wanted to say I will send in a file and you understood that the collection basket of Gramadli is very poor in terms of plagiarism checking. That quantity, that identity, that deal with is because once we check the government plagiarism, I found it may be eight percent, and as it is asked us to allow till eight ten percent, right? But when we have sent these files to the publisher, they sent back it is twenty three percent. Then my academics have some confusion regarding reliability. Efficiency and consistency of checking plagiarism through grammar. So, in that case, I tend to push them commonly as substitution of drill bit to check the plagiarism. So, in two cases, just check into your sincere account to develop this grammarly. I think once you are able to do it, it will quit marketing because plagiarism as well as, well as English grammar checking. So, once file side need to be enhanced. Like unlimited in uh, what MS Word plugin, and number two is that the collection basket. There are many more publishers, or you can say open access resources that you need to link with your plagiarism basket so that once you check it out, report everything is fine. But the percentage consistent with other similar kind of plagiarism software needs to be added. Right? This I got a point, sir. In fact, that's the reason of having alternate version of. MS Word plugin. So, in case you have very large file, of course, there is a plugin for your MS Word you can use. But yes, of course, uh, taking as a feedback, I, I believe that in future we will have this too. So, uh, yeah, I hope. Yeah, whenever I'm, whenever I'm trying to install the plugins for MS Office, I'm getting this message. Uh, is it in the same system? No. Sir. Sometimes uh, it's a very problematic to plug in in Word. Depends on the values from person to person. Correct, sir. So for that, now uh, there is a new link that has been shared for all the users. I'll definitely send it to you also. Sure. That user guide, uh, the new user guide that is given. And for the, if you have the old version and new version, all the tickets are Right. I don't think much 
questions because we need yeah. to help. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. And uh, तो मोबाइल से वो ये ऐप है उसको कुछ भी भेजो तो Thank you, uh, Mr. Vinod Alam, Sales Manager, Product Specialist, Food Factory Solutions, as well as Board of Food Senior Area Manager, PLS, for such a nice presentation on improving research capacity using Grammarly. We are very thankful for such a helpful demonstration and valuable input from Grammarly from your side. We are thankful to our university library, Dr. Nathan Park, for organizing such a nice program for the academic upliftment. Thank you for technical team, all the staffs, and the Commission Management Review Network, national and international scholars, online and offline. Thank you. For closing. Okay, we are closing. <laughs>